this is strong. But it's great to see the support out of you folks here because football is important to you. Football is important to me. It was a way of life. It taught us a lot of things. Sacrifice, hard work, teamwork. And it's still some of the people that you call on today because you know they've gone through the same experiences you have. And none of it's easy. None of it is easy. For the SEC, uh, South Carolina should be the favorite in the East, especially if Garcia. Uh, I'm laughing a little bit. Coach Spurrier was asked the question, why do you continue to keep Steven Garcia on your team? And five times suspended. Now, obviously, Coach Spurrier knows count. If this guy didn't have something to offer, he wouldn't have been around long. But Coach Spurrier said, oh, you know, you know, uh, he's a smart guy. He's graduated. He already got his degree. Gosh, is he stupid? <laughs> <laughs> he goes, you know, he's Spurrier just he tells it like it is. But they have one of the great receivers in America now, Sean Jeffrey. And Marcus Latimer, wow, he's he special. Uh, I'll talk to Marcus a little bit because two years ago at Olive Ranch, we went over to South Carolina and played the 7-on-7 seven -seven tournament when he was a senior. He was about 190 pounds in He's about 231 right now and about 2% body fat. I mean, you can strike a match on He is an impressive guy and, and really a leader of that team. But defensively, they're going to be very good in South Carolina. Mark Rick, he, he's got a, a, a tremendous quarterback in Aaron Murray. He's lost two tailbacks. Uh, Marlon Brown, the receiver from Hardy, has had a great spring and summer. They expect Marlon Brown to kind of fill in for A.J. Green. I mean, he's not going to be as good as A.J. this year, but he has that kind of potential. And, uh, our, you know, the long brothers are over there from Briar Crest. So George has been in here, in here recruiting. Uh, Will Friend is the new offensive line coach. He'll do an excellent job there. Uh, Tennessee, Florida, you know, with Florida with a new coaching staff. It'll be interesting to see how well Charlie Weiss, how quick Charlie Weiss, excuse me, brings along John Brantley. You know, Charlie doing an excellent job coaching. They have the fastest man in college football playing running back in Jeff Thomas. Uh, they're talented. They've got great tight ends. They have speed on the outside. The key there is they lost some first-round draft picks in the offensive line. So if they can solidify that, they're going to be okay. Defensively, losing Janoris Jenkins hurt. Uh, he, he was a great cover guy. But, uh, you know, so much speed and talent there. Tennessee, it'll be interesting to see how, how they come along. You know, getting Jansen Jackson back helps a great deal. But again, I think they're in a process of molding that football team. And the quarterback's got to play a little bit better. Vanderbilt's very exciting. James Franklin is a guy I know well. Uh, he went to Michigan. <laughs> Same high school as Harry Shue, myself. But uh, James was at Maryland the last few years with Ralph Region. You know, Maryland had a heck of a year last year. But uh, Chris Mark from White Station. Will be the middle linebacker. He's first team all, or excuse me, second team all SEC. Heck of a player. They just don't have a lot of consistency right now at the quarterback spot. And uh, they've got to find some guys in the secondary. They feel like that they don't have much depth there. Kentucky's excited. I think Joe Phillips is doing a very good job there. They have a new defensive coordinator, Rick Minner. He's the head coach of Cincinnati. We know him when he was the top of USA would come down here. Rick's a very good football coach. Uh, interesting to see if you can get that defense turned around a little bit. You know, three, four. Uh, they're going to be mobile. They're going to be mobile. They're going to be three, four, and then slide to four, three. And try to keep people off balance, but they'll base out of three, four. Uh, in the West, you know, there's Alabama, LSU, Arkansas, and uh, gosh, it's going to be week in and week out. You never know. I think Steve Craig, for the new offensive coordinator at LSU, has put more emphasis on the vertical passing game. They want to throw the ball deep off the play action. And like I said, their offensive line, they played 33, 36 games together. So Les is really excited. And then on defense, I know they lost Patrick Peterson, but they have two freshman corners that are as good as anybody has in America. And it'll be great to watch them against Oregon to see speed against speed in that opening ball. We might see in that opening game the national champion rematch, championship rematch, if both teams stay healthy. Uh, kind of interesting, uh, 
uh, Jeremiah was solely after the Alabama game, walked into Coach Nutt, he said, this isn't like playing in the Pac-10. So, <laughs> you know, these defenses, <laughs> they're, they're a little faster, a little tougher. But uh, so when you get that, that group at LSU, I mean, it's it, it speed, but they're upfront guys. Now, LSU probably has more depth in the defensive line than anybody in the West, but Alabama's not far behind. Arkansas, they put it all together. Jake Beckett is a guy that's really going to be a, a great player for them as an outside linebacker, defense man. Uh, Jerry Franklin inside at, at linebacker. But on offense, they don't think there's going to be much of a drop off of Tyler Wilson, their quarterback from Mount. You know, the only difference is Mount was 6'6, Tyler 6'1. But gosh, he, he can throw the football, knows the reads. And then with Davis, they have a couple other running backs coming on. They have a freshman coming in they're really excited about. But their receiving court is, again, the best in the country. They have size, they have speed, they have the ability to make plays after the catch. And on defense, they're getting better. Uh, Mississippi State, I, I just think Chris Ralph is grown by leaps and bounds in that offense. And Dan Bowen's going to do more with them offensively. They have a pretty good running game. You don't know how much Manny Diaz meant to him on defense. You know, Manny went to Texas. So now with a new defensive coordinator. And then losing a couple guys like they did on defense. Uh, they've got to have some depth. But uh, they open here in Memphis on a Thursday night. Then they turn around and play all on the following Thursday night. So, you know, early, they're, they're, like I said, there's some games early. Uh, Mississippi State, Auburn, uh, South Carolina, Georgia. Alabama, Arkansas, those are all within the first three weeks of the season. So right out of the gate, we're going to, we're going to get a test and see how it goes. Uh, Ole Miss, they're, they're, Bradley Sal was down at media days. You know, good-looking guy, Brandon Bolden. Kentrell Lockett's back. He's healthy. But the key is going to be who's going to be the quarterback. Is it going to be Mackey, Stout, or Brunetti? Uh, Barry did an excellent job. We all know how good he played at MUS before he went up to West Virginia. So uh, I just think that Ole Miss may not have as much depth as some of these other teams, so if they get a starter hurt, it could hurt them in the long run. Uh, Auburn, Coach Chizik, he, he said, you know, last year no one was picking us in. But we'll see. With Michael Dyer and the running game that they have going, the key there is they lost a bunch of guys in the offensive line again. How quick they can get their offensive line back. And then when you lose a guy like Nick Farrell, who's a game changer, it's hard to find those defensive linemen, but they feel like they're going to have a little bit more experience on defense. Then we talk about kicking game. You know, that's, that's such a big part of it. Uh, Georgia, as both a place kicker and punter back, are going to be excellent. Uh, the Rose kid and Campbell kid down at, at uh, Ole Miss, they're really good uh, punter and kicker there. And then return guys, LSU has speed, speed more speed. I don't know. You know, people say, how do you pick a team? What I, what I try to say to people is, let's wait until we get into November. Because the roster's going to change between now and the first week of August. Because we still have some guys trying to get eligible academically for summer school. Some of the freshmen, incoming freshmen, still haven't qualified through the clearinghouse. And then part of the game that nobody likes to talk about, but it happens, is injury. Who's going to make it through camp healthy? And the thing that they've done now, obviously, there are no more two days like we know. <laughs> right, coach? Those grind. <laughs> I went three days. Three days. <laughs> you guys had three days. Yeah. Oh, with Parcells and Proctor and the coach. Yeah. What a what a group, huh? Bobby Proctor. <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> I gotta tell you a story. My mother-in-law lives in Moore, Oklahoma, which is only ten miles from North. So I go out there, and Jim Don is coaching out there for, for Barry in Oklahoma. So he said, come on over. we got a camp going on. So I walk over, Coach coach told me about Proctor before. They have nine, 10, and 11-year-olds in this camp. 